for today's video, I'm going to be doing something a little different than I've ever done before. Uh, the bullet that is going to be used in this test is the 55 grain Blitz King in .224. I'll be shooting one out of a .222 Remington with a 1 and 14 inch twist barrel and one out of a .223 with a 1 and 9 inch twist barrel. Um, doing my load development, getting these to both shoot within really similar velocities. My 222 was 2832 feet per second average, which puts it at 145,645 RPMs on average. And then the 223 was 2,821 feet per second, which puts that at a 225,680 RPMs on average. For just over an 80,000 RPM difference between these two and roughly a 35.4 percent reduction in RPMs from the 223 to the 222. So let's go see if RPMs matter. And that was the 222 at 2832. Line those up quite right for the chronograph. And that one, 2,852. So a little bit higher velocity. And if we just throw these up here on top of each other, we look at permanent wound cavities. And this guy held just a little bit bigger chunk that penetrated deeper. But your large portion of that permanent wound cavity, as you can see, pretty well identical. Because even though 80,000 RPMs does sound like a ridiculous amount of RPMs, it should have more of an effect than that. 
it really has a minimal to no effect at all on the bullets and their performance. Yes, you can actually reduce loads simulating long range and get just as accurate of results as if you were to set that gel block out at that range and shoot it. So yes, there are significant RPM differences. Here's your proof. The RPMs made virtually no difference at all. I got one tiny little bit of chunk that penetrated deeper here. Um, so I am gonna go ahead, shoot the TT3 into this again, and the TT2 into this again, the other direction, just to try to create more of these same results. Let's start with this 223 this time. I do believe I said it already, but the 223 was going 2852. Here's to the next round. That one was just that little bit slower. You can see that chunk penetrating up here, looking an awful lot like the 222, just that touch slower, 719. So cold bores did have a little bit higher velocity, but as you can see, when you're looking at the major portion of those permanent wound cavities, these three are almost identical. Or these three, this guy came apart just that freckle more which I don't think had anything to do with the RPMs because if you really look at the major portion of that, that is so extremely similar that yes, this can totally put to rest indefinitely the RPMs being reduced more than what they would slow down over distance actually plays no real factor into what that bullet's going to do after it hits its target. It's virtually the same thing even with a roughly 80,000 RPM difference. Before I even started doing any of my videos, I did consult many of the major bullet manufacturers, all of which told me reduce loads and fire it into gel is a perfectly adequate way to test bullets. That's how they do their velocity test. Um, I've had a lot of comments of guys question me on it. I never once believed that the industry experts 
were lying to me, but I still wanted to do this test to put it all to rest. Obviously, RPMs really didn't play a factor at all. Yes, you can shoot gel at close range with a reduced load and simulate what it would do at longer ranges. Hope you guys enjoy the video.